also because I yes, need you to don't want to add it to the topics. If if someone is specifically open, opening a pull request for Hacktoberfest, you can just add a label there on the pull request and right. Hacktoberfest accepted, and then you don't even have to merge it. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, cool. Um, I actually I did add a if, label that says Hacktoberfest on this one. That's... If you label the issues with Hacktoberfest, like some of the general issues will be solved really fast because a lot of people are looking for opening pull requests. Yeah. And there are many people who are not looking for just opening a pull request for the sake of it. People are working on it. Too. Yeah, people are doing good stuff. Um, yeah, so that's and that's why I want to sort of go through and and spend spend some time. Um, uh, uh, spend some time actually. Um, you know, figuring out what 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 do we need to get done here? Because or like, and what stuff is good for people to do um, do in Hacktoberfest? Because I think some of the you know a lot of our issues um, I haven't I have I've we've all made some and I've made a lot of them and I know I haven't done I haven't all the way flushed out uh, to someone who is uh, is not familiar with the project what needs to be done. Um, so I think I need to go through and sort of explain a little better, like, hey, here's the file you would start looking in and stuff. Um, OK, let's just, let's just merge this one. OK, and then we can say that we got our first Hacktoberfest thing. All right, great. Um, got to go change that label. All right, OK, so how's it going, Sutanshu? Uh, yeah, it's going great. All right. Okay. Yeah, you fixed the um, 2.10.0 um, auto SK learn. Yeah, so Sudhanshu has a pull request up that fixed the 0 0.10.0 SK learn release. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, thanks for doing that because obviously I hadn't gotten around to it yet. So, uh, right. So, um, okay. And let's see. Okay. And then we should just make a note about Hacktoberfest here. So, uh, Hacktoberfest. Um, one PR merged to fix rate mode. Back of frame mode usage in file source dot close. Uh, so we need to go through um, issues and figure out which ones would be good for new people and make sure that they have enough information to complete them. Um, and I think, you know, this we could also um, uh, maybe make some new issues um, uh, uh, for making operations um, uh, and so ideas. So, so what I'm thinking is we might have so uh, create new miscellaneous operations. Um, uh, so new, sorry, operations slash misc, and just accept a bunch of PRs to that, and then sort of move it later, right? So we could basically say, hey, if you, we can we can come up with a bunch of random ideas and give people to, you know, if people if people want to write the code to do them, then we can organize uh, where their code should actually go when it's done. Um, uh, ones that are good enough and organize them into different packages when Hacktoberfest is over. All right, okay. So, um, does anybody else have any ideas on sort of Hacktoberfest uh, applicable things um, aside from operations at this point? And then I want to see if we can come up with any operations. Like, I don't know, we can we can ask people to make new models too. That's always good. I think there are some new models um, in the, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's 
see. Yeah, we gotta put it over there. Yeah, we could probably go maybe mention some other okay, Gen Sim. There's like there's probably some more stuff that we could do here to to organize them. Uh, there is also uh, like an another model is an auto scaler. There's another auto scaler uh, model. Yeah, like inside it, like they have created two uh, two other APIs, which are like auto scale and classifier two and auto regressor two. Okay. Auto classifier two and auto regressor two. Like they have added that in the uh, uh, zero point ten version. Okay. Uh, auto. Regress. Auto classifier and auto uh, regressor two. All right, great. Okay, those so those could be ones that we can add then. Two. Okay. Oops. Okay. Cool. Um. Anybody else got anything immediately that sounds interesting for people to? expose uh, we can add uh, documentation for the cli commands that are not still documented oh yeah and like we talked before like we need to add more python examples too mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think we have some the some of the commands are there's there's examples within the tutorials, but there's not within the sort of reference for the CLI. Okay, um, have people uh, uh, write the Python equivalent of the CLI commands. Um, for tutorials, etc. Okay, great. Hey, that's a good, good, good amount of things here. Anything else that somebody could think of? All right. Any operations that might be good? Um, things like pulling from various APIs could be useful. Um, so if anybody knows of any like. Um, you know, random APIs, maybe like stock data, things like that, that could be kind of useful stuff. Um, we could sort of just jot down and if somebody wants to go write a wrapper on top of something like that, that could be, that could be useful. Um, does anybody know of anything like that? Um, you know, you could pull data from somewhere, expose that as an operation that you can add to your data set. Um, I wanted to do one on weather, but I'm not exactly sure what the best way to do that is. I think that there's sort of a hodgepodge of information about that. Um, I'll just write that down. Um, any ideas there? Or I guess if you have some ideas, then you can, you can, you know, we'll make, let's see. Um, maybe we should make, let's see. How should we do this? Uh, yeah, okay. Well, if anybody has any ideas, just shout out and get her. Um, or make an issue. And I saw Gitter is maybe going to end up with the, did you guys see that about Gitter, that they got acquired by Matrix? Um, so there's maybe going to be like a bridge to other sort of communication channels. Um, so like other, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen Matrix. Um, um, I think the it's Element, I guess. Yeah, Element. And I think Element is a sub thing of, uh oh, a sub yeah. thing of Matrix. Um, so basically, it's like this decentralized encrypted chat thing, and they're also like big on um, 
Um, let's see, well, yeah, let's go to element. Uh, but they're big on um, bridges. Um, so like between sort of different kinds of chat. So I was think as we had talked about, I think we had talked about maybe going somewhere else at some point. Um, but maybe that that will sort of solve itself because they can bridge to wherever. Um, oh no! Uh, oh right, yeah, right. I, I am. Okay, but I think it's all, or maybe maybe I just yeah. Anyways, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Part of the matrix ecosystem. Okay, so that's a, that's a thing. Might be able to make use of that some somehow in the future. Um, okay, let's see. Anybody else have anything to say about Hacktoberfest? So I'm going to go through and make issues um, regarding the things that we talked about here. And if you, if anyone thinks of anything, um, go ahead and make an issue um, or comment on the issue if you've got some like some more to say about this. Um, and I'll post those in, in the Gitter. Um, so let's see. Uh, John, to make issues and links to issues in Gitter. Uh, comment on them if you uh, have anything more to add that might help people. Okay. okay let me just. Oops. All right, um, and let's see. So, Sakshan, you said you want to talk about um, image colorization. And then Agen wants to talk about the Q-test for the distributed orchestrator. Sudhanshu, do you have anything you wanted to talk about? Uh, you have your uh, yes. poll request. Uh, yeah, I have two things. Like, firstly, uh, in the scikit-learn, like, there is something uh, wrong with the the clustering model. Is this showing up and within that pull request or is this separately? No, yeah, yeah, yeah it's showing in the pull request in the test runs. Mm -hmm. What does it have to and do with the upgrade to the to 10.0 or is it separate from that? It's like it, no, it already about existed. So in scikit like, oh, in like it. a clustering oh. model. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. And the second thing like uh for the uh, transformers and the TensorFlow hub model, mm -hmm. like uh, how, what should I like do with those? Okay. Because, uh, like we had this discussion like long back, and I, I actually forgot like what we had to do. Like I how, think... how are we going to? Mm -hmm. I think the accuracy for this. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um. Let's see. Uh, Yash, did you have anything you wanted to talk about? No, I'll, I'll just look around the FF. Okay. okay, let's see. I'm looking for issues to tackle. Okay. I'll probably work on window support. Like, okay. Uh, that sounds good. Right now, so. um, and I think I, let's see. And I think I still need to update this tutorial a little bit. I realized that didn't completely update it, but... Um, oh, and we still need to reorganize the docs. Um, I think I added the... Yeah, okay, so I added these little tab things so we can start using that 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 um, plugin that you talked about, the Sphinx plugin that does the tabs um, for Windows and Linux. Um, and then also Mac, if there's a difference for Mac. But usually that's the same, right? So... Um, Okay. Let's see. Uh, do, do. Okay. okay. Um, and I'll make a note uh, that uh, John still needs to fix HTTP test. Whatever. 
All right. Um, let's see. All right. Okay. So, so Q test for distributed orchestrator image colorization. All right. Let's let's talk about image colorization first. So, what's going on there? So, uh, like I talked that uh, we need to first split the channels and then we need to merge them too. So for that, like, do we should we create different operations for specific tasks or uh, should I use the OP source code, OP code? Uh, What's that OP source uh, plugin? What I forgot the name that you and Himanshu created. Oh yeah, so yeah, what was that? Um... Okay. Let's see where am I at here? Okay. Um, was it these are the ones that you added, right? Oh, yes. Um, I thought he added. Where did he add this? Uh, he added the source. In in. Oh the oh the op source yeah. Oh um yeah. let's see and I think did I just use that in the. I think I just used that too and I think I need to. Um. I think I need to. I think we still need to document that. I think we have an open issue on documenting that. But I did just use. Oh yeah, I used that here in this tutorial. Um, so there's sort of an example of, of using it again. Another example, but um, okay. So and what you're talking about is okay. So in what what do you mean by use this? Like what what what's your what's the use case? First, we need to pre-process the images, and uh, so that for that we we'll need to first I'll use the op first we need to make operations or do I should I just write the function and use op source? Okay, so I guess the question is, how would you? I mean, how do the images need to be pre-processed, right? So you're talking about before they go into training or they, before they go into model, the model they need to be modified in some so way the right set, so the data set is a, a bunch of images with okay. three channels but uh, the x is uh, a single channel and y is uh, two channels okay okay and do, are they regular images or are they in some kind of specific format so they are regular images, but we first convert them into a different color space. Okay. Then we split them. So we already have a convert color operation for that in the image operations. Okay, so we don't have a split one. Yeah, we don't have a split one. And that was an issue that we faced uh, two months back. And then I think we used uh, get single or something for splitting and merge. Okay. Um, so I guess the 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 and the images I assume. So I'm thinking that right. Yeah. You. I. I mean, you could do this either way, right? You could do it. You could do it um, as an op source, or you could do it as a data flow. Um, it, with as an op source, you would basically, you know, you just write a function that goes through and iterates over all the images, and you know, yield and and, and returns them right with and just call the functions. Um, as with the data flow source, you would write. I mean, you would write. You would write the other operation, the split operation, and then you'd create the data flow and and you'd do it um, that way. Um, no, I don't know. I mean, I guess that, at the, I mean, at the moment, that doesn't provide any particular advantage um, because we're not running any of the CPU-intensive operations and threads. 
um, like in the future, it might provide some kind of advantage. Um, I don't know like how CPU intensive that that is, right? I mean, there there's like a threshold on where it becomes advantageous to do that and where it does not. Um, but um, uh, I guess you know, for now, you could. It's probably just simplest to do the op source, and then once we have once we have, and that reminds me to pick up that branch um, that I had the threading code on. I have a threading code branch that I need to to merge into master at some point, um, basically to run context and threads, and then to run uh, work on threading code branch. Oh, and that has a tutorial that goes with it. Um, OK, so. Basically, I would just say use the op source, and then once we have threading code, um, then we can easily just pull out the splitting from that op source and make it an operation and run it as a data flow, and then get you know the parallelism out of it. Um, so, because I think you know it's going to yeah, be more straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, that was the issue with the split one. We have two or three uh, different outputs that. We are not sure. We don't know if it's two or three. Like if the if if if, if it's one if it should be split into single channels or one channel and two channel like that. That is the ambiguity. Okay. Okay, so the issue here is that there was ambiguity around how many channels the input will be split into. Um, and so, uh, okay, so basically you would have a variable number of outputs on the separation or something? Or? So if we use the op source, then we don't have to worry about this for now. Okay. All right, so let me just put resolution here. Because op source is yeah, function that simpler, yeah. they use in my right? Yeah. Um. Okay. We're going to use the op source for now and then transition. Also, later. I think I showed, I shared my screen and showed you the results on the notebook. Yeah. I. I think, yeah, I, I seem to remember that. You said he was doing pretty good, but it wasn't as good as you would have hoped, but I was excited about it, <laughs> if I remember correctly. <laughs> so the thing is that uh, most of the uh, bluer images are uh, very much closer to the original image, but if there is extra green or yellow, then it uh, fails. OK. So I think it's an issue with the uh, less uh, because I'm using less images in the data set. Okay. I'll expand, I'll try and expand the data set. I'll probably make a custom data set of my own and push that to uh, uh, get uh, make a GitHub repository so that people can also use it. Okay. I'll cool. try to do that. You can also think about maybe um, using. Um, you know, you you could think about doing, uh, you know, just writing something that that scrapes images from somewhere, right? Um, you could you could, yeah, I don't yeah, know. That's what I. Was yeah, and and then that way you don't have to republish the images. You know, you publish the source or whatever, right? Or you know, just the function that does it, or and you can use that as you know an, another source. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, we can use that in the OP source itself, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you could use it in the OP source itself if you wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just yeah, just something something to think about. Instead of, I mean, you you may want to republish all of the images too, but try to think about how do you how do you publish the way that you got all those images? Because um, you know that's that's helpful um, for people going and recreating the data set um, that want to know how the you issue got is it. That I just have a doubt that this, the images I'll find, I won't be owning them. So I don't know if. Well, I, and that's why that's why that that's why it's good to publish the thing that grabs the images and not the images themselves, right? Um, because yeah. you know, there's there's 
this this is um yeah i don't know if you guys have you guys have probably noticed this by now but but uh the the way that the way that um that this project has been structured um <laughs> is is to avoid avoid situations like that right um so so things like how do we get the data set not what the data set is right and and, and such um so yeah i would i would just think about that and then you can always you know what you can always do is um mm, this is a yeah I don't know. I was thinking you can also you could you could show it running in GitHub Actions and then do the GitHub Actions like release thing. I think they have a release action, um, and you can you can have it run run the dataset scraper within GitHub Actions and then publish the results um, to the releases page as like a tarball or something. Um, I don't know how. I don't know how I don't I've I know that they have that action and I know you can do that. I don't know the legality of is GitHub releasing it or are you releasing it then, but I think the main thing becomes if you're pushing if you're pushing other people's stuff, you need to have the appropriate um, you know, like citation or license information. Um if it you know, Yeah, that is right. that is one of the things that like what if I do this and this is not something that is allowed for me to do it? So yeah, things like I, that. I think I think another thing that might be good for this is the wiki is Wikipedia. You can download all of Wikipedia, um, and I don't know if you can download like just the images or something. I did this recently. Uh, uh, download and those images are usually licensed Creative Commons with some attribution, um, and. Uh, and and so that's probably going to put you in the clear. Yeah, uh, Creative Commons share alike. Um, images and other files are under different terms. But you know, this type of thing might be very. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. Here, just just grab all the ones. And when when you're in doubt like this, grab see if you can grab everything that's just public domain, right? Um, because then you don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, um, Wikipedia might be a good place to look for that. So, okay, okay. Data set, maybe try Wikipedia uh, license. It might be more straight. Actually, the 4,000 images I was using as a data set was just, uh, was on Kaggle, so I don't think that that was an issue. So I was just mm -hmm. using them. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Um. Let's see. Okay. Um. All right. Anything else on that? Uh. No. I'll. I'll work on that. Actually, next week. Uh. I have my exams so Good it luck. will take a little time yeah thank you okay so then let's see um yeah so let's move to again we're going to cut tackle your thing last because i'm not sure how long that's going to take um sure. let's see and do you want to sit do and let me just ask you this now but do you want to sit here and do this together or do you want to do it um do you do you want me to just take a look at this offline yeah, I think it will be better to take a look at the offline because it might be long. Okay. And yeah, I I'll put that and uh, like numbers in Twitter so you okay. know what exactly. Cool, cool. Um, cool. Okay, so then and then the last thing we need to talk and Agan, did you have anything else you wanted to talk about then? Oh, uh, nothing. Okay, cool. All right. And then so, so Sudhanshu, let's see, pull request for auto scikit learn. Let's just check that out here. Um, right, sweet. And was there one more place? Let's see. Oh, what happened here? I seem to remember something about this. Maybe it's double declared or something. Uh, no, actually, you actually fixed that. Okay, I did fix that. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so, and then... God, we have so many stupid tests that rely on the network. Or, and I think we need to... Okay, the 
this looks good. We need to, there's sort of two, two global things here, but we need to make a better, um, <laughs> we need to, I have another pull request. Actually, I think it's the same one with threading has retry on operations and it would be good to sort of introduce some retry, maybe like a retry, um, uh, uh, handler on some of these, some standardization to the model test cases to make it faster to write model test cases and to, to standardize all of them and and so that if they fail the accuracy assessment, it just tries to retrain the model again um, because I think, you know, we, we run into errors with that. And, and while it's kind of annoying, it is good because it has helped us catch cases where all of a sudden um, the accuracy tanked. Um, okay, so let's merge this guy. I don't think we need to change log addition for this. Come on. Okay, nice work with the commits. Okay. Okay, it looks like we didn't. Okay, I'll close this separately. Or maybe I'll just squash them here. We'll squash them and we'll get the fixes. Okay. Fixes. H58. Okay. Looks good. Sweet, thanks for doing that. Okay, so. Okay, yeah, and then get merged. Okay, so what's the issue that we're facing with the Psychic classification model? Yes, so, uh, no, no, it's not classification, it's clustering model. Oh, clustering. So in the clustering model, uh, the thing is happening is, like we have the, the given data is there. Okay. And it has these column names but uh, in clustering what is happening is it is actually trying to search for a column which actually doesn't exist like the way i'm actually able to understand the problem here. okay so in clustering model like there are two types of clusters one of the cluster is one which uh, uh like which which does not have like its output and one of the clustering model is like which takes the output for for getting the accuracy which actually takes the ground truth for getting the accuracy but there is another clustering model which does not do oh. that okay yeah. yeah 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 i think so, i remember what you're talking about um yeah so yeah so in that case what is happening is a uh, so in that case like the ground truth will not exist but it's actually trying to search for that ground truth value because in the accuracy we have actually like done that that to like uh, uh, when we like uh, have to get the accuracy uh, we will actually get the ground truth value in the records and then we will go forward to calculate the accuracy oh so this is specifically with accuracy or is this uh, yeah. well this is okay let's just take a look at the code for one second and see so unsupervised um okay okay yeah when we have the oh god okay oh god i have a whole write-up from himanshu on this where is that because that's going to be helpful to us in this case um i really i don't know if we're going to be able to find that um but okay so let's just take a look here um so here's the existing accuracy method we grab all the data. Um, so, target Salta features. Okay. Um, so, we have to more stuff. Okay, and target is. Okay, yeah, the cluster, T cluster, 
and T cluster is the feature, so basically predict. Um, okay. Um, okay, so then we say if we have this this thing that we're okay, so we have something that might be used as the ground truth. Um, do this. Uh, yes, there it is. If we have the target mm -hmm. uh, value, then we will actually getting the y data, which is the ground truth value. Or else, like, we are not uh, doing that. We are just giving the x data and the prediction. And from that, there is this SIL. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, score. yeah. That's that score. takes the data mm -hmm. and the prediction and gets the the accuracy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Um, and let's see. I can't remember it. Let's see. Let's run the example because I can't remember what the uh, what the data looks like here. So let's see. Um, actually, right, so let's see where it's the clustering examples. Um, again, models. Okay, claimants clustering. Okay. So let's see. Okay, the clusters are integer values. Okay. Um, Okay, so the clusters are integer values, and basically it gives us, it's currently giving us a different score based on whether we have data or we don't have data. Um, okay. Let's see, yeah, I guess, okay, so now I see your, your question here is, your question here mainly has to do with what do we do, okay, because, so, right, as, as background, there was no standard way to do accuracy. So it's basically like, okay, every model gets to choose their own accuracy. And obviously what we've realized is that's, that it's not a good approach here, right? So we needed to, to create these accuracy scores. Um, so in this case, I think. So yes, I, I so I was thinking like maybe uh, I should go ahead and wrap these uh, accuracy mm -hmm. scores. That's what I'm and thinking too. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking too. And then you basically throw an exception if you don't have the target. Um, yeah, you throw an exception if you don't have this 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 T cluster, right? Yes. Yeah, if you're in mutual info score, if you pass silhouette score, and then you don't have to. Okay, so if you pass, okay, yeah. So if you pass silhouette score, if you use the silhouette score, then we don't want to do that wrapping of the source. Um, remember how we just did that source thing where we did the um, the with features method. We don't want to do that if we're using the silhouette score. Oh uh, yes, yes. Um, and I think where did that code go? So let's see, fetch. Uh, so that code was actually in the model model dot okay, yeah, okay too many computers then fetch from it damn it My tab completion does not want to work today. Okay. All right. So model, model. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, here. And so basically we're doing that here. Um, okay. Yeah. We don't want to do that if we're doing this, this, this plus the silhouette. Um, okay. Yeah. So maybe this, this, and now the, the question here is, 
Okay, yeah. So obviously, I think I think what this 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 tells us here is this is not. Um, yeah, it's this, this. I mean, this is sort of like a hacky solution to this. So um, we've already found out that it's not. It's not. It, it, it hits a case where this doesn't work. Um, so let's see. Um, or well, I guess let's see. It says protect where it's not implemented. Let's see. I think we need to maybe take it. Let's take a second look at this in general. So, accuracy, um, if not, has etcher. Okay, so we're basically we're implementing this method. Okay. Accuracy. Pass the accuracy score, and the accuracy score passes the thing that we're predicting on. Okay. So, because the yeah the model knows what it's predicting on. So let's see. Okay. I'm just trying to think. How do we? How do we sort of? You know. This is this is one of those cases where it's like okay, so the accuracy score right now it can take you know it takes these records and then it takes the it takes the features that we predicted on right and it's assuming the record has, um, let's see, it's assuming the record has the ground truth value. Yeah, the ground truth value. Wait a minute. Accuracy score dot score. Accuracy. Accuracy. Okay. Features. List feature. Features on which prediction was done. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, we didn't know. Somehow we forgot to pass the features that we used. Or let's see. Oh yeah, we're just you know, we're just checking that the predicted features. Okay. Um, so in the case, I guess this this breaks be also breaks because. Um, because for this silhouette score. So let's bring this up side side by side here. Um, so for the silhouette score, um, where did our damn predict went to go? Where did accuracy? Where the hell did it go? Um, oh, because you removed it in this version. That's right. Um, okay. Let me just do this so that we can see it. Okay. Just so we can see it. Um, okay. All right, so yeah, so for the x data, let's see, x data equals np array x data. So in this case, we're going to use yeah, our, our accuracy score makes use of the the uh, the features, right? Um, let's see, the predict x data, and then we do the mutual info score. Okay, so when we get the output, we'd end up with, like, when we're running accuracy here, like, the accuracy score usually grabs the predict output, so it'd end up with the prediction, and then, like, for, if we're implementing the mutual info score, accuracy score, um, you know, we'd be getting, we'd be getting a record that has that, what, that Y prediction in there, um, and let's see. And 
Let's see. Let's see. Let's watch this with features. Um, yeah, we could. Uh, so I think this is a case where we'd be overriding the me accuracy method in the base class. But I think that also what this tells us is that, you know, when we were talking about model identification, you know, like models identifying themselves as regression or NLP or, or classification uh, or, or clustering like this, um, we may want to have another subclass of the model base class here, right? And maybe this is, so this is model context and maybe we actually take this accuracy method and um, we move it into, let's see here. So we move it into like regression model context, right? Um, And that way, you know, this one's applicable for regression models. And then we have another one for, um, you know, clustering models. And then we implement appropriately off that um, clustering model context. Um, okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll let you know how that goes. See you again. Um, thanks. Um, but. Okay, so I think this might be a case where this might be the direction we want to go here, um, because in this case, um, let's see, yeah, we're gonna want to say, you know, uh, we're gonna we're gonna, I mean, we're gonna want to override this for the scikit guy itself, because the scikit one knows about the t cluster variable, right? Um, or maybe we, let's see. Essentially, I mean, I think I think that we're going to end up implementing the accuracy method here, right? Um, but I think the f sort of what what could be done is we don't have any more clustering models right now, right? So we're we'd kind of be prematurely um, writing you know the space class if we did it for more than just the scikit models. Um, but I think this is the type of thing that we might do where we say, okay, we, um, you know, we have this reg regression model context and um, things, you know, you, we'd, we'd change the regression models to subclass from that, and then we'd change the clustering models to subclass from this guy eventually. But, you know, you know, that actually doesn't really make a lot of sense because we still only have this one case here the only reason that this helps is essentially like you know we don't you you don't you'd have to go through and change all the models right and say okay oh well they actually subclass from regression model context now right instead of from model context right and then that basically means that you you'd be getting an issue right away when you go to the nlp models through the clustering models but you're already doing that um as you're going through and, and working on them um so let's not do that Sorry. Um, yeah, I think you really just need to re-implement this accuracy method sort of as like similarly to we did in this base class, right? And go through and say, okay, so accuracy score dot score. Here, let's see. Yeah, you go through. So say we're doing, all right, okay. Let's go back and say we're doing the mutual info score, right? So we come through, we have the prediction data. And in that case, the class, let's see. Okay, that's the classifier has the attribute of predict. Okay, so we, uh, we already got that if we're over here in predict. And this is the case that the feature data, or this is the target case, so there's T cluster, right? So yeah, I think. Yes. Yeah, if you have T cluster, if you have T cluster, you end up doing this. If you don't have T cluster, yes. you don't do that. So yes, yeah, so actually, I actually found a, a hack mm -hmm. to it. So like in the testing data, if we actually rename the 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 pred prediction, the last like the value which you have to predict mm -hmm. to T cluster, 
then like all the tests will pass oh yeah <laughs> i like i like that okay um so okay so you do you have this pushed right now or no it's just this is like in progress no like i haven't pushed it because i thought like it's it's a yeah it's a hack it's a okay i'm hack. just curious okay so basically where is this because that sort of helps me understand so it's in the test circuit yeah okay test test uh, test circuit yes okay so and so what, yeah, okay like config the clustering data above okay clustering data oh uh, yes yes in the clustering data if you actually change the x to cluster okay then like they all the tests will start passing okay and that's probably because this guy what if you change it to cluster they start passing okay oh and is it because the model config what's the model config being instantiated with config fields T cluster minus two cluster present. With label, without label. Okay. True cluster. T cluster equals feature X. Was that the only change you made? Or did you change this one too with the X? You changed everywhere it was X to T cluster or to cluster? No, I like I haven't made any changes yet. All you do is just change this to cluster? Yes. And, and oh, it's, it's because the feature doesn't exist. I think it's because, of, let's see. I think it's because the feature doesn't exist and so then it doesn't use it. Um, Smart type equals cluster record features target values uh, in, in yeah. the logs actually it is actually trying to find uh like that pattern actually what do you mean so it so it's in the in the like we have the with features mm -hmm. so in the with features we have like a b c d and cluster it is actually trying to find but the data has actually a b d x mm. so mm. like if i change x to cluster then like it will start passing all the test Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm suspicious of why that is. Um. Because I think record dot features target. Okay. T cluster. Because. If target. Is this for the ones where? All right. Okay. Let's just step back and say. Okay. What do we need to do next here? Um, I think, I think we, we know that we need to implement the, the mutual info score and the silhouette score, right? Yeah. And so, and so then from there, you basically need to change the accuracy method of the clustering model to be, you know, similar, similar to this over here, um, on the left hand side of the screen right yes, but yes. but yeah okay so i think that's that's our immediate course of action right yes we, we okay. have to like uh, grab these coders okay cool like it like it uh cool cool yeah. all right okay yeah you're you're in a very complex land here this is <laughs> this is a major refactor you're doing, you're doing yes. good um let's just Okay, so um, let me just try to recap what we talked about here. So, uh, so clustering models. Okay, and I wish I had this write-up that that Himachu sent me one time. I might be able to find it, but um, <clears throat> can be constructive. See. 
Okay, yeah. Transductive clustering models. Okay, actually, this has to do with whether there's a truth for that. Okay, so have a truth ground truth or not um, when they don't uh, or when they do uh, so we need to implement the model dot accuracy method um, and I think this sort of leads into the question with what do we do with the NLP models for accuracy? You basically say, um, I would say that you implement, okay, so implement null accuracy score, um, raise and raise uh, not implemented error within NLP models accuracy methods if the accuracy if the accuracy score they are passed is not the null accuracy score Um, does that make sense? So basically, we're saying, we're saying the NLP models, like they have their own, or actually, let's see, the, N the NLP models have their own accuracy scoring, right? So we could take, we could take their, their methods and split them out into a new accuracy score. Um, or we could say like, or we could just implement the method and say, I only support this kind of thing. And if you pass me another thing, I'm, I won't work, right? Actually, it probably, it's probably better practice to, to go split them out into their own accuracy scores. So, um, because then, you know, we could end up writing another one and we'd have to go change it. So uh, let's take, in there, is there any issue with taking the accuracy score, the method out? Uh, I guess you'll find out. Yeah, right. And turn it into its own class. Uh, oh, this is very. This is very interesting. <laughs> turn it to its own accuracy score class. Okay, um, and then um, I guess in this case uh, we may need to we may need to override the accuracy method in the NLP models so that the base uh, one is not used. Uh, we should at some point consider creating a regression model context classification model context etc um, subclasses of model context uh, so that um, models can trust that the base class has implemented a sane accuracy method. Uh, I was actually moment. thinking like uh, if yeah. we could have like an interface mm -hmm. of model context and from that like we can create the concrete classes of the regression model context and classification model context uh what do you what do you mean uh like do we have like interfaces in python like in java well so i mean 
so sort of um uh yeah, well, yeah. Uh, where is this they introduced this thing in python 3.8 which is sort of an imp interface um it is where is it anyways yeah can so continue though yes yeah, so, so like uh, if we like we don't uh, we are we aren't using the interface then we will have to do the inheritance right mm -hmm. yes but if the uh, interface i think it will become much more flexible mm -hmm. um so what and what 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 would what is it about the interface that um, is desirable in this case? No, like I was just thinking. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, because I think I think that, um, I mean, the idea of an interface really, like, it's just to make sure that we're on the same page. Is that you know we're we're implementing certain methods and properties, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think in that case this damn thing it just implemented this um uh, yeah in that case where i mean it really ends up being similar to the subclassing right there's not a ton of a ton of um like really that you know what you what you gain is you don't have to subclass from something right really if you're trying to check that things are the same, you're checking that they're implementing the same interface, right? But you don't necessarily, when you're writing the code, you don't necessarily have to have subclassed, right? Is that sort of the thing that you're thinking we gain from this, or? Yes. Yeah, so that that is nice. But yeah, I don't think we have support for that type of thing in Python 3.7. Where is this goddamn thing? I can't remember what they called it. Um, protocol. Um, this is, it's very, very similar to, um, sort of an, an interface. It basically checks that everything has the correct methods. Um, and I don't, I don't know, yeah, if we gain really more than that, right? Because we can still at the, yeah, uh, I mean, there's, and we can do that. Right. The thing is, what do we lose? So we lose. Um, I mean, we lose the base configurable stuff at the moment. That's pretty, pretty important, right? With all the config code, that's rather important. But it doesn't necessarily have to stay that way. We do have to do some. We do have to do some massaging on the config front because, uh, uh, yeah, as we all know, the config code is 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 hairy. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on in there. Um, yeah, we lose the, let's see. Yeah. You know, an, inter an, an interface type of approach would work here. We just lose the config code and that's mainly the args and config method and with config. And those are sort of methods that help us take the, the larger config structures and, 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 and grab the uh, the properties that we need out of them. However, those are those are things that if we refactored the config code more, we could get rid of that. Um, I think we could get rid of that. Uh, okay, okay. The init method. Um, let's see. The init method and config. Yeah, I think it's really mostly config related stuff. I mean, we, so we could move to that sort of interface approach um, and then, you know, not have to deal with, you know, oops, I subclassed the wrong thing. Um, but I think that that may, let's just make a note of that because I, I need to do some work on the interface or on the, uh, on the config code. Um, uh, so let me, let's just say, or we can move to an interface approach where we don't uh, subclass. Uh, we just okay. Um, so main hurdle. Uh, sure. The main issue here is that we need 
to make sure the, or we need to finish separating. And so Sakshom did a long, he brought us a long, a long way of the ways from uh, from the config code that we had that was super wrapped up. And now things are sort of, they're, they're ready to be, they're sort of hanging by a thread together still. And we can probably, probably pull things apart. Um, the final final step here um, to make sure that we separate the classes from their the config stuff. Um, so we need to finish separating classes or class methods, uh, args, and uh, no, don't don't spell that. I don't I want to spell whatever that word is. Um, let's see, args and config. Um, and with config and i think this is going to be one of the major things that need to happen before we hit the beta milestone okay main issue here is that we need to finish separating class methods args and config and with config from the uh, config parsing or from our code i get rid of them and only use the config parsing code. Um, they uh, get added to classes by way of subclassing. And if we stop subclassing, we'll lose them. And that will make everything cleaner. So I like that as a long-term approach um so let's yeah so we can we can definitely move towards interface type of approach that's a good idea all right anything from anybody else uh i think we got suck shaman Sutanshu, both of you guys are still on the line either of you have anything else you wanted to talk about anything not related to this either uh no not for now I'll try to finish the colorization stuff this month. Sweet. But I am not sure if it will be possible. I wanted to finish it in August itself. <laughs> but even I tried September, then things got in the way. I understand, I'll... man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck. I, just let me know if you need anything from me on that. Um, yeah. 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 I, I feel that. I am really trying to, to, to finish some things up myself. So. Right. I also came in last week. Uh, I was a uh, half an hour late, so you already finished. The oh movie. yeah, I had. I kind of stayed on for like fifteen, twenty minutes, and and I think everybody sort of, you know, I think both you guys actually had joined, but joined a, joined a little yeah. after that. And I had, I had, I was super under the. I'm super under the gun for that patch still, so I'm still trying to get that thing out the door, again, um, for the next round of public review. So I just, I just grabbed the time and I was working on that instead. Okay. Um, okay. So sorry I missed you guys. I was like, I'd always said to myself, oh, you know, I'll stay on for the whole hour if if people don't show up. But then I, I didn't do that, and that was a mistake. So I'll make sure that I do that in the future. Um, just in case. All right. Well, I'll talk to you guys uh, next week, and I'll talk to you on Gitter. Um, so everybody have a good one. Thanks. Have a great. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.